Well, that's uh, the force protection for the chaplain. The chaplain's only non-combative in the military. So we have to really focus in and make sure that we're tactically sound and know our skills as a soldier first. So we, you know, when we're out on missions or different things, our first thought is protecting the chaplain because he's not armed. And so we need to make sure that they're taken care of on the battlefield. Are you wounded, ma'am? No. All right, we'll be out here in a few minutes. Okay. Two, three, oh. It's great working out with the chaplain assistants. It's good to see them mentally and physically um, strong um, to build re uh, resiliency and uh, unit cohesion. It it's good to work out with them every day. <laughs> As a soldier in the garrison and a chaplain assistant in the garrison, a lot of times, you know, people think we come here to take a knee, but we have a unique role in providing religious support more to the family members while their spouse are, might be deployed. We also provide religious support to DOD civilians, and even here in Belgium, we do religious support for host nationals. So you really have to have a wide variety of religious skills and understanding the different backgrounds that you deal with. Currently, right now, we have about 314 chaplain assistants serving across 75 installations, just providing that religious support back home while the soldiers deploy. The chaplain assistant uh, bridges the gap, really, between, in many ways, between officer and enlisted. Uh, and also gives the officers a sense of, you know, what, what is it that uh, an enlisted person can add to my approach to, you know, how best can I be resilient, how best can I exercise my freedom of religion here. They are an asset in many ways. Happy 106th anniversary, Chaplain Assistants. For God and country, sir!